G'day and welcome back for more Space Engineer Survival. Now I have very quickly turned off the tram because you'll see if I turn it on I've only got 39 seconds of power left. So we're gonna grind down this rotor. Grr. Of course I don't have enough room in my inventory. Gonna grind down that rotor and then we are going to build a connector on here and a connector on the back of the tram so that we can hook it up and get it powered again because yeesh. That is not good, being that low on power. I just hope I can quickly turn it on, move it forward, get the connector on the back of it built, and then bring it back and get this one built. Hmm. Power on, move forward. Power off. Now, I can't adjust this side to side, but I think the small grid is small enough that I should be able to get this lined up in a way that it'll connect anyway. That should connect in either of, let's move back a bit, either of these two positions should be able to connect to that one on the base. But is that row I just built too high? Yes, it is. I need to drop this one more. There we go. That should work. Now we will add it to our hotbar so that we can connect really quickly. And we will power on. Move back. 34 seconds. And lock. Now we need to go to our transformers. Make them a group. I'm not going to put the recharge script on this just yet. But we will later on. Tram transformers. Save. And where are they in here? There. Recharge on and off. Perfect. <sighs> okay, good. That was way too close. <laughs> so too close. I don't think the sensor necessarily helps my situation. Because when it is... Oh, which one is it? Hmm, I'll have to fiddle with that later. When it is on... Oh, it's this one. When it is on, it uses 3 kilowatts of power. Which is actually a reasonable amount. It's not tiny but it is the thing that keeps me alive so I guess it's worth the cost I don't know you guys decide <laughs> what we need to do today is fix up our wheels so that the so that all of them push the tram forward and there's a couple of ways I want to look at doing that but while this is charging up let's show off something that was mentioned a few times when I was building these stairs and we need a couple of these to demonstrate it as well. We need our stairs, our 1x2 flats, and we need our 1x2 face. There we go. No, we don't. That is the wrong type of window. We need our 1x2 left. That's it. So, with our stairs and with our center banister sort of thing, the handrail, you could use windows to achieve a reasonable handrail on the vanilla stairs. So if we pop down a set of stairs here, you could see that if we grab our 1x2 left windows, we could either place them, place one here, which will give us a rail that's pretty nice even in its construction state, but you could build it up into glass and it'll work fairly nicely does stick out beyond the end of the stair which is something I'm not a huge fan of but that does work the other option is to go for a full block in height and we can do that like this place a 1x2 flat like that and then place the left on top which can give you a very tall wall on the stairs that one would certainly work for some designs Probably more so when the glass is actually welded up. But it would work. And I think you might even be able to get away with this. Let's try it. If we go with... Left. So if we go with that, that'll actually stick on. And then you can do it on top. Like this. And with those fully welded up, you'll only have glass above the stair. You won't actually have it on the stair block itself. Which could look reasonably good. And I've use this in the distant past for my designs however this won't work here we've only got one block to play with 
and so I wouldn't be able to have a railing on both sides nor would I be able to easily although I suppose I could just place it on this block that I'm standing on have a block that stops you from falling down this way for me to use a window method like this I would need to get rid of the double wide stairs or punch out one of these walls and add an extra row in the middle and the reason I went with this design was that at the top I already went with the five wide and I kind of wanted to come up with a design that fit with this space and I feel like this was the kind of best that I have in terms of fitting within the space that was already there and I'm pretty happy with how it turned out I quite like the way that these double back on themselves at each level and that we can see the stairs through it's all quite complex angular shapes which is interesting and I'm happy with it and hopefully with all that discussion of that we've managed to get enough charge on our little tram so that we can disconnect oh an hour of power sweet that is plenty so let's hop into spectator camera and it's some reason all the way up here let's come back on down and you can see that I didn't weld up some of those blocks oh well the reason we've got spectator cam is that I want to stare intently at these wheels really really closely now if I press F9 you can see sort of what I was talking about last time you can mostly tell which way they're going when I move each direction when we're up this close but if you don't have access to spectator cam you're going to very much struggle to get a close enough angle to see what's going on. So, what are our options? Well, the other option that a few people mentioned, and I think is probably going to be the simplest way to go, is to grab all of our groups, turn them all off, and then turn them on one by one. And the direction that the tram moves is the direction that we're going to go. Now, we don't... Now, we not only have to turn them all off, but we have to turn the friction right down. Otherwise, the other wheels tend to stop the one group from moving everything forward. The lower horizontal ones are correct. They are placed the way that the game normally has wheels placed, so we know they're correct. The top ones need to have invert pro propulsion, but I will test them as well just in case. But we know these ones are correct, so we don't need to test them. But these ones, we do. So let's try with our left, toggle it on. Let's crank up our power let's crank up our friction and for these we'll also need to crank up our strength so that they really push hard against that rail and if I go to third person now we should just be pushing with those ones on the left and we are and we move forward and backwards with the keys as expected so I'm pressing S right now and we're moving backwards pressing W we're slowing down and moving forward good and now we can do the same with all of the other ones toggle those off reduce our strength back down friction down to zero okay wheels all fixed now we get moving really easily with every wheel actually helping it's quite nice I stiffened up the suspension on the bottom as well to try and make it rock a little bit less but it seems like it rocked less anyway once we didn't have wheels on the top because it was those top right ones that were set the wrong way although it looks like I oh no they are correct now just visually it started looking wrong and that's what I was talking about it's so hard to tell once you start moving in a decent clip but once I had all of them going the right way, it did start looking a bit more smooth as we were rolling out. So what we need to do today with the tunnel is we need to get the curve to go a bit more steeply up toward the solar axe. Uh oh. Why aren't we moving? I think I might need to... Oh, that might be a better way of doing this. If I drop these height offsets to minus 0 0.28... Maybe a bit further than that, minus 0 0.24. And then increase their strengths. 
They should act more as bumpers to keep it in the middle rather than really pushing on stuff. That may actually make, it, make things smoother. Let's see. Yeah, it's working pretty well. Let's go over the transition and see what happens there. The other nice thing about it is, if I've got a slightly wider gap, transitioning onto the upper one should work a bit more smoothly. Something else that someone mentioned is that I may not need to have the horizontal ones on the roof since all they're doing is just compounding gravity's effects. But for the moment, with the way that the tools shake around, I think having something to stabilize the tram a bit more on all surfaces is probably a good thing. Oh, we've got 2,000 solar cells. Let's take the nugget out and weld up the tower before we keep going because I do want to make sure that we keep manufacturing more of those. Come here, nugget. Just a small distraction. A useful one though. Oh, and it's daylight outside. Perfect. Not having to do this at night time. It is about to be night time though by the looks of the position of the sun on the cliffside. This is kind of fun to fly in first person. Whoa, 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 whoa. Coming in hot. I always get a bit overexcited as I do that. I figure using up all of these solar cells never takes very long, so it was probably worthwhile coming here to do it. And then letting the assemblers, oops, build up a bit more. Yay, one quarter done. Let's keep going. And I think that was all the solar cells done. Yep. So we got a whole... Well, got a couple of rows done. Seems like we'll probably need about another... I'd be guessing by how much I just used then... Maybe another 7,000 solar cells. So, still a fair way to go, but... That was some good progress. Part of the reason I don't want to set the auto construct to make 7,000 solar cells is that I will forget and then I will always have 7,000 solar cells and I really won't need them and if I do need them I'm just gonna cry because that means the solar axe has been destroyed there was some unpleasant background noise and I just reloaded so that we could hopefully get rid of it and it seems to have worked I'm gonna load up the welders with a few more steel plate as they're not low but getting there what we need to do with the curve is we need to raise it up probably maybe twice more and then we need to make a couple of turns to the right so that we line up with the solar axe and hopefully that'll do the trick and get us to an angle where we can relatively easily pull into the station station below the axe like before, we're going to need to place down another transition piece that's going to be just ever so slightly more tilted than these ones. Then, just the same as before, we've got to build our little ring around the outside so that we can join the top rail to the bottom rail properly. It's kind of a slow process, but it's definitely faster mining this with the tram itself than it would be trying to mine anything like this by hand or with a mining vehicle. Since I'd have to have some projection guide to go by whereas this kind of does that for itself I, mean, I suppose it's really not that slow let's see if we can cheekily get a little bit further this time and maybe that was a bad idea won't do that again so once we get onto this level we'll have a look and see how much steeper we think we'll need to go or whether we can start turning to our right i think i need to go one la one more steepness up even though it's not a consistent rate each time. I think I do need to do this one more time to get steep enough to actually get up to the solar axe. This just always looks so much nicer from the spectator camera than doing it from first or third person because we can see from in front of all of the rock that's flying everywhere. It's certainly starting to look like a decent tunnel, although we can't really see it from that angle. There we go. Now we can see the tunnel against the skybox. This is going to look so cool when it's done. Now what I probably could have done, I suspect I would have been able to get away with it, but I was just a bit too nervous to do it right from the start, was create a small bend as I do the upward curve. I kind of 
thought it might have been more sensible to do them one at a time. So what I've what I'm planning on doing is going up and then going right. But looking at it, I probably could have done this with both direction changes with each, at each transition. It might have even been slightly more sensible as that would have given us fewer transition points. So fewer bumpy bits to go over with the tram. But I did not think about that until just now. So <laughs> I stuck with this. But uh, when I make the tram line for the silo, I might attempt differently. Or when I do the top end of the tram line. That's the trouble with doing these things and learning as I go, is that I'm going to make some mistakes that aren't really easy to fix. And this should set us up perfectly for doing the next bend. I think the next bend should be our right-hand turn. Let's have a look. We've got the solar axe there. Let's turn on, turn our drills on, and let's move forward. We're pretty close to being the right angle. Maybe the next bend we will try and do a turn as well as a final pitch increase. Oh, actually, that's probably a very bad idea. Because the pitch change requires a gap on the top rail, I probably want to keep the two bits of rail passing straight ahead, whereas the side ones, they don't, but I'm going to need to make sure that all of the wheels are in contact so that we follow the rail around. What I'm thinking might be an issue is that we'll get a bit of twist because of the wheels having a bit of compression in them. As we go through here, if we were to turn right, the top front wheels aren't going to jump onto the new rail properly. So that's potentially going to be quite an issue. And I think we need one more pitch up. Still don't think we're steep enough. I think that transition may have been slightly too steep a uh, change for the welders. But made it anyway, so that's okay. Are we good? Solar Axe Station. I reckon this pitch is going to be about right. Since we do want to end up a bit below the station. Otherwise, we're going to end up popping out just before we get there since it's on a bit of a mound. We are 1.2 kilometers away, so we've made it 300 meters so far. Now, what we need to do for this next bit is do a little bit of a bend to the right. I could be really lazy on this one. Just thought of a easier way. I don't actually need... Oh, I probably should link them. I was about to say, I could just build a bunch of light armor blocks straight up. And then... Add these onto the top row. And then I shouldn't need to actually link them two bits of track. The trouble with that is, I then increase the chance that this track would be uh, susceptible to the trash cleanup. But while I'm still here, as long as I put enough blocks down, it should be okay. Let's test it out. Because I can always add those blocks in later if I decide to put warning lights or anything like that around. Let's see if it can handle this transition. We need a little bit of a run-up with how steep this is. Uh, a little bit more of a bend, and then I think we can get onto our projection style ones. Nice. In fact, I think the next one should be our projectable one. Now, we don't have that many blocks here, so I think I will build that little linkage. Just to decrease the chance of this getting cleaned up. It's only taken me a very long time, but I've started to actually remember which way around to scroll my mouse wheel when I'm going from the half slabs back to the full blocks. For so long, every time I would go to here, I'd then scroll the whole way through again, rather than the quickest way. Ugh. So hard to get used to these things. Now, I also should be doing a transition here, shouldn't I? That should do the trick. Then we'll be building projector, and then we get to play around with how we're going to move the projection forward. It was suggested to me that I use a timer, but I might actually see if I can set up some controls on the hotbar of the tram to move the... Uh, that's not quite right. Again. Set up some trams on the hotbar. Set up some trams on the hotbar? Hotbar on the tram 
to move the projection forward in the direction that I'm traveling so that every time I finish it I can just hit the button a few times weld the next bit and that way I don't need an enormous tram line blueprint I just need something small that looks pretty smooth I'm going to need to drive back to the base in a second so that I can get some batteries so that we can do this projection though I should probably weld a bit, a little bit of this first so that I am sure that it's heading in the right direction before I get too excited I think I might need to give these wheels a bit more gas they're struggling to get up this hill if I pop down two more blocks I'll be sure that I'm on the correct or that I'll be sure that I'm on the angle that these this section of track represents let's do that quickly and then see if this is going to be our projectable section I'm willing to bet some of you have already figured out what might be bad about what I've just done you can kind of tell from this perspective. This is not the gravity bug. My tram is slightly tilted to one side because I did the curve after doing the ramping. Ugh. So, I've now got a slightly tilted tram line. Awesome! Just what I didn't want. Ugh. Oh well. I'm just going to accept it because I don't think I can easily fix it. Ah. Uh... So silly, Splitsy. Why did you do this? You should have turned and then tilted up. Because you wanted to stay oriented to gravity. <sighs> Alright. Back home we go. Dang it. Dang it, dang it, dang it. That was very silly. But there's... Yeah. Almost nothing I can do about it. At least I am pointing pretty much where I wanted to with regard to the solar axe, so... I'm just going to have to accept that it's slightly tilted. That's really annoying. I don't want to have to drill this whole thing out again. Although it would be kind of funny to always see the, <laughs> the hole from the wrong tunnel that I made. In order to do this projected section of the tram line, we need a programmable block on here. We also need an antenna on this thing. So we can broadcast out to the section of the tram line that we're going to be trying to control. So we'll get all that on. Okay, I think I have everything I need on board the tram in order to build what we want to have on the section of track to allow it to function. And that is, we're going to build a projector on the track, which means we need a battery to power that. I'm also going to see if we can use a programmable block and an antenna so that the tram can send signals to that section of track to move the projection. The idea being that I will be able to use this piece of track as my blueprint. So let's blueprint it. That'll do. It'll be somewhere in there. I'm sure I'll be able to find it when we get to it. Because I don't have that many large grid, static grid uh, blueprints. So the idea would be that we can control and move that so that we don't really have to worry about the fact that the ends of that one are sloped. What we're going to do is first start with our battery in the wall. Because what I want to do is build a rotor head to allow for conversion between large and small grid. So that we can use small grid timer blocks, small grid uh, antenna, etc. Rather than having to dig out all of the space to be able to build a large grid antenna down here. And I'm just going to build this out because I'm going to need to. So on our projector head we need our antenna. We're going to need a couple of timer blocks to control the positioning of the projection and then we need a programmable block to accept that input and that should be everything we need on there go projectors up and lastly we get our programmable block or our antenna i should say okay so programmable block what we want Actually, let's set up the projector first. Blueprints. Static. Grid. Be this one. Okay. Now, I'm going to do my usual cheaty way of doing this and use the uh, spectator cam to set this thing up. So it's going to be vertical offset we're going to want to change as we move along the track. I want this time block. Let's see if I can even do this. I didn't actually check whether this is possible. Yes! Increase vertical offset for this timer. 
then the other timer block will be decrease vertical offset. That should work for us. Now the projector, I want it to keep projection just in case. I don't think it's going to be an issue, but I'll do it. And our programmable block needs our transmit and receive script. Just code OK. I don't even know if I need to do that anymore. I don't think I do. I need to grab our antenna and assign our programmable block to it. Broadcast radius does not need to be that big. It probably only needs to be about 1500, which will make our power last a lot longer. Currently fully depleted in four days. Oh, I really didn't, needn't have worried. That's a long way off. Okay. That end of things should be fine. Let's hop in this programmable block. All right. Let's see if this works. Uh, let's set up our spectator cam so we can watch this move along. And it's five and six that'll move things forward. Let's start our drills up. Let's turn on our welders. And let's get ready to roll. Probably help if I turn the park brakes off. Okay. Oh, we are crawling. I think we're too heavy. Yeah, we need more wheel strength. <laughs> <laughs> uh, more power okay herein lies our problem let's bring our spectator cam in closer oh herein lies our real problem I didn't turn the welders on you can see that it's having great difficulty placing the block on the bottom if however we stop drilling should be able to get it placed so this is kind of how I'm going to have to do it, I think. There's a little bit at a time. Go forward, drill out. Stop drilling. Wait for those rocks to get out of the way. It's just going to be a slow, slow process. Jeez, you can, <laughs> you can make out from the position of the trees, but also more from the position of the goose's parking area, just how steep an angle we're at. Oh no, I did the thing that I needed to not do. Dang it. I made a slopey bit. I think I might need to uh, alter this <laughs> thing. Oh. Ah. Much better idea. I'm using the wrong blueprint now. Oops. If I use the blue, if I make a blueprint of the track that I'm making right now, that'll be perfect because it doesn't have any slopey bits. Let's create a blueprint of this, and it's nice and long too now, so it should be perfect. Much better. Now I won't accidentally weld the wrong type. And we've got a longer run. Sweet. Oh, how I wish I didn't have those rocks to contend with. Would make this so much faster. What's sort of tempting is to build an extra drill underneath and just make this section of tunnel much deeper so that the rocks all get out of the way. And I'll be able to make sure that all these pieces of track gets get placed properly and instantaneously because the rocks won't be in the way. I'm going to make this thing a little more efficient. This is actually quite slow. Uh, the way I'm going to do that is by pushing these drills even further forward. Every time I have to stop, it's because I've been unable to weld up with this bottom welder. But if I actually push the drills further forward, then I'm going to be able to place down more of them between each section of drilling. The further the drills are from the position of the welder, the more I can get done in a, at a time. I could probably also move the... Hmm, is the gap between the welders and the... No, it's more the gap between the drills and the wheels than the welder and the drills. So, an extra five blocks, that'd get me probably one more. But if we go really crazy and try this, might give us an extra couple of blocks at a time. So right now I'm placing down two, then I'm having to move back, placing down two, moving back. And that's really tedious. We go all the way out to there with our drills. Then turn them off, wait for the rocks to go away. Then as we move forward, we can weld up one block, two blocks, three blocks, 
But I was limited before because I couldn't get my wheels any further forward. I still don't think it's helping me actually all that much. Now that I realise it. It's probably made no difference at all. I think I need to move the welder forward? Maybe? Yeah, if the welder's basically underneath the drills... It'll be able to reach all of the spot that's drilled out. So a maximum space between the welders and the wheels. The welders, the drills, and the wheels. Hmm. Let's do it. I'm going to move the bottom one. The top one's fine. It doesn't need to be moved. But the bottom one should be movable. Let's see if this is better. I think it will be. I think, I think, I think, I think. Let's go on with them. On with the drills. Unpark the brakes. Press F9 so I'm not moving the camera. Let's drill ahead as far as we can go before the wheels limit us. And then we can reverse back. Now with the drills off we should be able to weld up all of those blocks. It's two. Three. Four. Can I get the fifth? Five at a time. Alright, that's not too horrible. It does make this tram incredibly ungainly, though. Oh no, that's as far as the projection will go. Rats. I'm going to have to move the projector. Okay. Looks like what we can do with our projection now is every time I get to the end, I can just create a new blueprint and then... Oh, I should be able to remotely access that terminal anyway and do it without having to go down there. That might have been a smart thing to do just before. But it looks like I can just replace the blueprint each time with a new one that's got all of the additional blocks that I've placed, I've just built on. Not quite as cool as just being able to press the button and move it up as we went along, but I had a feeling we would reach a limit with that. So, it was kind of cool while it worked. If you weren't building a tram line or a if you were building a like hanger or something like that that had a consistent size, using the trick of moving the projection one block at a time would actually be really quite handy often. It would make it not too difficult to build up a whole hanger in a relatively short order. Or even a hull of a ship, you could do the similar sort of thing. If there's a section that is repetitive, just build it. Shove it forward a few blocks, build it, shove it forward a few blocks. I'm going to have to remember that in the future if I do any designs where I can take advantage of it. I've just been watching my artificial horizon on my HUD. And I've never actually looked into this and whether the distance it's giving me is the distance from the surface when you're underground. Because that could be really helpful if you've got a drilling rig and you go underground to pipe to somewhere and you don't want to pop out of the ground if it's giving you the distance to the surface that would make it really easy to make sure that you don't actually pop out I might have to test that at some point I was so close so close I think it's probably okay that I'm slightly off to one side of the solar axe but I can't believe how close I actually got, considering how kind of I didn't really aim it at all. I just kind of built it and hoped. <laughs> well, I sort of aimed it, but not in any particularly advanced or technical manner. No, what's going on? I'm jammed. I'm stuck. Why am I stuck? Those ones don't appear to be touching. Do they? No. Why are those not touching? Oh, I think I know why I'm stuck. You're why I'm stuck. Alright, I can fix that. The welder. <laughs> the welder has jammed me. Uh, let's change back those settings that I just changed that will probably make things explode. 
and we will go with our piston five, maybe? Nope, wrong one. Oh, I'll just bring them both back. There we go. No, I'm stuck. No. How am I going to unstick myself without exploding? It's not good. Uh, oh, that one's moving, but this one's not. I think these wheels might be, like, stuck in the block or something. Oh. Maybe this will be enough. Oh. Um, what else can I try? Maybe do the same on this wheel. It's only wobbling around a lot like it's making a difference. Don't know how this got jammed. I think what happened was the welders jammed it. And then the wheels have gotten stuck because of the welders at the front jamming everything in. Everything's on. It should be moving. Okay, can gyroscopes help us here? What are we jammed on? We're jammed on something and I can't work it out. Maybe if I get rid of this block here. Aha! Uh-oh. That might have ejected us further than I wanted to. This could be a problem. This could be quite a sizable problem. Um, we appear to be wedged into the ceiling. Let's see if we can get this piston to push us off the ceiling. Or if this is just going to make everything explode, me with it. Can't think of another solution right now. No, something is still making it want to go up. Alright, something is very broken here and I don't know how to fix it. Whoa! Okay, there's... There's definitely some clang here. I think we may have lost the tram. Oh yeah, we've definitely lost the tram. No! <laughs> no! Oh, I thought I had the wheels working properly. This is a disaster. I, I don't think there's a way to recover this without rebuilding the whole tram. Again. Oh, boy. Um, well, that's potentially the way we're going. Let's just see what happens if... Oops. Whatever was... Oh, holding in that welder on blew up the piston, it must have been. I wonder if this will move now. I wonder if we can get it... <gasps> we got it back on the rail! Yes! We have lost several wheels. But we are back on the rails. I don't have to rebuild the whole tram! Yes! Just have to rebuild the bits that broke off. Dang it. Including this suspension that's fallen from the roof. Are you from the roof? Are you? Yeah, you're from the roof. <sighs> Alright. I think I know what caused the problem here. And it's fortunately something that shouldn't happen to other trams. It's an issue specific to this one, if I'm right. What I think happened was that we ended up with a physics meltdown <laughs> thanks to these welders being on pistons. And with them being on pistons, they got jammed and then that's created a massive phantom force loop thing that's ended up with... The wheel's getting stuck, and the only way to get out of it being a complete teardown, or a partial teardown. But, for next episode, we will still hopefully get to the Solar Axe, now that we've got our system set up. I will need to modify this front end so that we don't get jammed. I think my whole idea of having these drills way out in front was a bad one. I think I need to bring everything back as as tightly to the rest of the 
tram as possible so that we don't get stuck on these sections like we just did then. So, there's fixing up my mistakes and plenty more to come. So I'll see you then. <laughs>